This, as we all know, is the century of the common man. His name, age, birth, marriage, children, pulse rate, and expected year of death are all punched on a card, which bears the warning, do not bend, fold, or mutilate. The same warning ought to apply to the common man, especially to George Lanyard McGraw, a valued and trusted member of the Corps of New York civil servants, honest, hardworking, and disgruntled. The common man lives and works all his life imprisoned inside the square lines of rooms, windows, offices, and streets. One day, for the good of his immortal soul, he must break out. September the 22nd? My God, whatever happened to July? There is nothing more uncommon than the common man. He is just as tender and just as violent as you and I. Inside of him are small eggs and volcanoes of rebellion. Crowded, pushed, tied and classified, he must explode. He must be born again. He must break out of his square-cut, regulated world into the universe of loops, curves, and disasters. Blood. It's gonna be a beautiful day. I wouldn't bet on it. It's a nice neighborhood, though. Oh, I don't know. I grew up around here. I used to swim in the canal, right under the sign where it said, no fishing, no swimming, no spitting. I don't believe it, Frank. You, a future detective, violated a city ordinance? Who knew? I had full intentions of opening a cigar store with a bookie on the sign. <laughs> what stopped you? My mother and a high school education. Oh, yes. Please come in. I'm Detective Flint. This is my partner, Detective Arcaro. How do you do? I'm so pleased to meet you. Well, I'm not really, but you know what I mean. Uh, no, yes, I don't. I think I do. Shh. He's asleep, poor man. I gave him four headache pills. Do you think there was one too many? Well, he had this cut on his head, this side, and he would not go to the hospital. He is not a man who can be forced to do anything. Even the boys, and he loves those boys. Yeah, but may we talk to him, please? Who? Your husband. Oh, he's not my husband. Papa McGruff is my father-in-law. My husband and I are separated. Permanently, I hope. Hi. Hi. Good morning, boys. You're up early. These are the police. Now, they're very nice, though. They've come about Papa McGraw. Where is he? Wake him up, will you, please? Don't bother. Leona! Who are these two zombies? Uh, Papa McGrath, these are the two very nice people they sent over from the police station. Now, this is Mr. Arcaro, and this is Mr. Um... Flint, Adam Flint. Fuzz. I know Fuzz when I see him. Well, am I under arrest? 
You fellas don't scare me one little minute. I have a constitutional right to make one free telephone call to my lawyer. Now, Mr. McGrath, your daughter-in-law made a telephone report of a robbery. May we get on with that? We can take up these fine legal points a little later on. You see what you got me into? Oh, Papa McGrath, please talk to them. Please, Papa McGrath, for my sake. I was assaulted by a blonde in a black sweater. I'm wasting my time. I should be at home making peanut butter sandwiches for the boys. The eldest one's studying solid geometry. It seems to make him hungry. Mr. McGrath, would you please, about the blonde. You said she hit you with a monkey wrench. Yeah, I told you. But please tell us again. You know, it weren't for me those boys would go without their afternoon snacks. Leona's a good girl, but she's not at home. She runs a bookstore from 10 to 6. My son's a bum. So it's up to me. I admit it, I love those boys. Brains, baseball, anything. They're going to straighten out the world. You wait and see. Uh, Mr. McGraw. About this woman that hit you in the back of the head. Yeah. Big girl, big girl with a with a, a fuzzy black sweater. If you were hit in the back of the head, Mr. McGraw, how come you know all her proportions? I'm very sensitive to such things. Also, Mr. McGraw, if you were hit in the back of the head by a blonde lady, how do you know it was with a monkey wrench? Have you ever been hit on the head with a monkey wrench? Well, no, sir. Until you have, don't criticize how I know. Mr. McGrath, I found your wallet. No, that ain't mine. How do you know it isn't? You haven't even looked at it. I don't care what I haven't looked. That ain't mine. Well, it has a $19 in it, you said it had. Are you trying to tempt me into telling a lie? It has a union card with your name on it. You're against unions. Well, that's no surprise. <laughs> it also has a picture of the two boys. Are you trying to give them a police record? Ah, it ain't mine. And you're only trying to claim it is because you don't want to look for that bandit that slugged me on the back of the neck. You're looking to put me, George Lanyard McGruff, in the cooler. Now, come on, admit it. Why would we want to do that, Mr. McGruff? Not that it's a bad idea. You boys don't fool me one little minute. You act intelligent. You're, you're clean cut. Always with a tie. Yes, sir. No, sir. But you're still a cop. Mr. McGruff, what have you got against cops? It's your facts and not a fairy tale. Sir, let me tell you something. Every year on January the 12th at 7.31 a.m., I am one year older, and I don't like it. In fact, I'm against it. Also, I'm against insurance papers, social security numbers, rules, regulations, vaccinations, and all kinds of law and order. Consequently, and therefore, I am against cops. It's logical. There are over 100 crimes committed daily in Manhattan alone, and where is the cops? Where is the cops? Nowheres! And playing pinochle at that. Am I correct in that assumption? No, Mr. McGrath, I'm afraid you're wrong. But you can't help yourself, can you? Because otherwise you'd have to admit to your daughter-in-law and those two intelligent boys that you lost that wallet because you fell down drunk. So you, 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 you're walking out on the case, are you? <laughs> Incompetence! Incompetence! Six five squad, please. Lieutenant Parker. Yeah. Mike? Yes, Adam. On that mugging complaint, it's a false alarm. The man who lost the wallet really didn't lose it. There was a woman in the case, only she had nothing to do with it. The man who was slugged has two grandsons and a daughter-in-law, and that's the reason he issued the complaint. Only there really isn't a complaint. Look, I don't know if I'm making myself clear. Without the shadow of a doubt. A man may commit mayhem, burglary, rape, murder, and even embezzlement, and get away with it, provided he remembers one simple rule, never commit the same crime twice.
like your unknown friend has sent us a dud. I still hold to the opinion I had in the first place. I don't think it's a bomb at all. Do I have your permission to open it? Why not? After all, he's your friend, not mine. Little diamond, a man's candy bar. <laughs> Here, Frank, catch. Yep. Can 
containing authentic hand-carved walnuts and pure artificial chocolate. Wait a minute, Frank, hold it. How do you know that isn't poison? It probably is. But my niece has eaten it every day of the year. It's a curious fact, isn't it? that the little diamond vending machine company's truck was hijacked yesterday by three men with shotguns. That they overlooked, $987.16 in change from the machine. They stole the truck, abandoned it, and escaped with the loot, which consisted of one box of 10-cent walnut bars, which they promptly shipped to the police department. Could it be that these foolish, blundering, unprofessional crooks are trying to make a fool out of us? Is that barely possible? What do you think, Adam? Could it be someone that you know? Someone who's pointing the finger of scorn at you personally? Where the robbery take place? 3-6 Trinity Point. Of course not. You're those nice detectives who are trying to find... What are you trying to find? Oh. What's happened to him now? He's hijacking 10-cent candy bars. Oh, we don't know that. I don't care what he did. He was drunk, irresponsible. And anyway, I don't know anything about it. Just what is it you don't know anything about? If Papa McGraw wants to drink himself to death, that's his privilege. And you can't stop him, and I can't stop him, and nobody can stop him. It's just that one morning, he's going to wake up so bitterly disappointed. How do you file these books? Alphabetically? Yes. By the author's last names, thank you. Thank you very much. You're very kind, and I was nasty. Now, please tell me exactly what he did. Well, nothing, I hope. Does he have a key to the store? He could have, but there's no reason why he should. He can't read a book. He claims it puts him right to sleep. Well, that's not so bad, but then the book falls out of his hand, and it makes this awful noise, and it wakes him up. So, all he does when he gets home is drink beer and look at old rabbit ears. That's what I call his portable TV. But here is the ironic thing. That puts him to sleep, too, with the program going strong. But he wakes up when I turn the program off, and he tells me that I won't let him sleep. But does this place have a door to the alley? Yeah. But why would Papa McGraw? I mean, even if he had a key. Well, I... I don't know yet, Leora. You know, I have a great respect for a man who doesn't know yet. What? You open that door with a nail file. Oh, Papa McGrath never used a nail file in his life. He bites them off. And he never takes a haircut when he needs it. And he hangs his wash towel out on the windowsill to dry. Just as though he didn't have a family at all. Leona, you sell beer? Oh, I feel awful. He must have been here. That's his brand. But 
Why would he come down here? To do what? A truck was held up across the street. Now, it's possible that McGraw, using your store as a lookout, got the exact schedule and tipped off his two Confederates. His two what? Leona, your father-in-law, drunk or sober, and for whatever purposes beyond me since he didn't take any money, nevertheless committed a robbery. A clever, well-planned, and ridiculous robbery. No. Oh, no. Does it mean you're going to arrest him? Yes, I'm afraid we must. Those two poor boys. Well, we'll, uh, we'll pick him up at work instead of at home. Yes, yeah, that would be awfully terribly kind of you. Now, listen, shall I call him and tell him that you're coming? No, lady. That won't be necessary. <coughs> well, I answered all your questions. I don't know nothing about nothing. And what could be clearer than that? <coughs> it's going around, officer. It's a vicious cycle. You get plugged up, and that causes you to breathe through your mouth. And what's the result? Lack of purification. Why? Because you got hairs in your nose and absolutely none at all in your mouth. Result? You get a bad cough. <coughs> I had the same thing, believe me, but I cured myself. You ask me how? Well, I'll tell you how. I switched poisons. Yes, sir, I took up alcohol, thus opening all the sinuses from here to here. Of course, alcohol is a bit of a drawback to a man who likes to be sober. Oh, what a mug! What a monster is the human being, especially in this light. I tell you, gentlemen, man is a monster, a human cockroach. And I'm no exception. And come to think of it, gentlemen, you're all monsters, too. Do you see and can you identify this man as one of the group which held up your truck and hijacked it yesterday morning? Are you in trouble, man? I wouldn't know. Hey, who's he? Don't tell him nothing. Take your time. Look him over carefully. They shove you around. Questions here, questions there. You feel like confessing. If only you knew what to confess. Am I right? Am I right? Lieutenant. I don't care to enter into any discussion with you. Well? These uh, guns you're wearing, uh, are they loaded? I wouldn't know. They ain't guns. Oh, they bear a remarkable resemblance. It shows your ignorance. They're solid plastic. Gee, that must be a great help. It's an advertisement. It's not meant to be a help. Oh, is that why you gave up so easily when confronted by a mere handful of determined men? How do you know about that? Uh, you, uh, you know, uh, under the pictures in the newspapers where it says, see page four, well, I am different from the rest of humanity. I always turn to page four and actually read what it says. Consequently, I am in possession of inside information, which is not generally known to the general public. Like, uh, I knew that these crooks neglected the money, instead of which they took the box of candy and sent it complimentary to a certain detective in the police department. It's all lies. Naturally. But the question is, can you prove it? Prove what? Prove what? We were faced with three gorillas with sawed-off shotguns. Oh, how frightful. What an experience. I would have died. Now, hold it. Did you or did you not look into their faces? I told you. Gorillas! Really ugly, eh? Dr. Frankenstein, in person. Like this? Yeah. Absolutely no. Absolutely no. How can you be absolutely sure about it? Well, I wouldn't want an innocent person to suffer. Would you? Absolutely. 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 Are you acquainted with the word perjury? Not personally, no, sir. Mr. McGrath, I have something very unpleasant to tell you. 
Despite your efforts to the contrary, you are now a free man. There are no charges against you. Hey, Mr. McGrath, I advise you not to stop along the way. Those boys will be coming home from school in about three quarters of an hour. Ah, you're breaking my heart, detective. Get out. Go on, get out of here. And here I was, hoping to make this the start of a new career. You're the worst thing in my book, McGrath. You're an amateur. And you're fooling with a profession where only experts succeed. And where even the experts spend most of their adult life making shoes in the New York State Prison. It's only round two, Detective Flint. to me that you were turning Coco Loco. What's the problem? The door's stuck. The lock is busted. Graf, my Graf, it's no use. I'll go phone the emergency repair. Maybe they'll get down here in a month or two, at the latest. <laughs> Search your memory and tell us where else he's likely to go. Well, you're the police. Why don't you find him? Why do you just stand there? Well, we're working on it, but it's very difficult. Now, there must be 97,000 bars in New York City. Wow! <laughs> Will you kids please go to bed? Could you order them to go to bed? Twenty-four hours. What if he doesn't call again? What if we never see him? What if he's dead? That's not going to happen. Why are you police people so sure of everything? Because Papa, because Mr. McGrath is a, a fool, but he's a very reliable man. Well, he's bound to come back. He loves you all. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. Calling me up in that tragic voice of his he has when he's dead drunk. I don't believe it for one minute. But what if it's true? Now look, could you tell us exactly what he did say? To forgive him and forget him, because he was going away and we'd never see him again. No hint of where he was? Well, he sang Mother McCree to me over the telephone. Well, that's not much help. If I were you, I'd check the boats. Huh? Why? I just remembered. He said he was going overseas. That's impossible. Not for Mr. McGrath. Well, she leads an interesting life. Her boyfriend's in jail in East Germany and her husband's president of a yo-yo factory. <laughs> You know something, boy? We are not yet ready for civilization. Uh, very true, sir. Um, what's your pleasure? Boilermaker. Make it two. No, make it three. We don't serve that particular beverage here, sir. Where am I? Will you tell me that, please? Am I far from home? Will I ever make it? Yes or no? Do you know the Waldorf Astoria Hotel? I know it, but it don't know me. You're right opposite the Waldorf. 
Well, you never know where life will lead you, do you? Uh, no, sir. Footsteps in the sand. See, yes, sir. Well, give me three shots of Irish and line them up shoulder to shoulder. Oh, look at this news. It's disgusting. Dr. Court Fleiss discusses the Q bomb. Imagine that. While I wasn't looking, they got up to Q. I would pay no attention, sir. Numbers. You and me are just numbers. The only thing different between us is the dates on our future tombstones, if any. How can we ever make the record books when we don't get to bat? Except to procreate our children, who nine times out of ten turns out to be a bum. Domestic troubles are very common, sir. Well, it's not going to happen to me. Nobody's going to disgrace George Lanyard McGruff. No, when I get through, they'll put a brass plate across this bar. McGruff drank here. trying to do? Take away my job? You were asleep. Well, do me this favor. Don't criticize my work. Look, do you want to take it to arbitration? Just take me to Dr. Kurt Fleiss's apartment. You're in the wrong tower. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good morning, Dr. Fleiss. You're a very important man, and rightly so. I understand that you have invented a little item called the Q-bomb, which, according to the papers, is just exactly like the H-bomb, only a little more so. Well, I don't want your bomb, because the fact is I have got one of my own, which, if I let this deadly weapon hit the floor, it will go off and kill the both of us. Boom! 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 Heaven forbid! Unless you come along quietly with me, keeping your trap shut at all times. No, listen, you stupid man. Do you know no, something? You'll like excuse me it. for mentioning it, but you speak English like a broken pencil. believe me. I am an American citizen and I've got the papers to prove it. <laughs> That's a dog license, Dr. Fleiss. Now where in the world are you taking me? Staten Island. Listen, you gangster. You're making a big stupid mistake. How about a little drink, Dr. Flies? Oh, it's pure licorice. Oh, you ignorant gangster, this is anise. I'm not a gangster, Dr. Flies. I'm a man with a mission. I'm not Dr. Flies. I'm not Dr. Flies. No, listen. I'm not Dr. Flies. My name is Paul Mayer Haps. 
If you're not Dr. Fleiss, what would you do in occupying Dr. Fleiss's apartment and eating Dr. Fleiss's pudding? <laughs> because, you stupid gangster, I'm not Dr. Fleiss. I'm a waiter at the Waldorf Astoria. That's the most obvious lie I ever heard in my life. Why would I lie to you, you stupid? United States security. Now listen, you gangster. Listen. I'm not Dr. Flies. Well, whoever you are, you're still my personal prisoner. One of the two of us is having a bad dream. That's all I can. I was going to sell you to the Russians, but I changed my mind. Give me a little drink, oh, will you please? Certainly, certainly. We have uh, apricot, a cherry, or uh, orange. Where did you get this fine collection of liqueurs? As if I didn't know. <laughs> I borrowed them from your apartment, Dr. Fleiss. My apartment? That's right. And I'm Dr. Fleiss? Inventor of the Q-bomb, technical advisor to the president, a very important man. You're a bit stupid at times, but that just proves my point. I'm Dr. Flies. You are Dr. Flies. Well, I suppose I could do a lot worse. Sixty-first squad, I take it, Flynn. Yeah. Anything new developed? Yeah, a man was found dead. Fits McGrath's description exactly, except he was six feet tall, thin, Negro, and wore a full beard. Okay. Well, that's an understandable mistake. Just having the two police boats. Nothing. Will somebody tell me this? Why are we looking for McGraw? Can somebody give me a sensible answer? Let him get lost. He declared holy war on the police department of the city of New York. And now the police department of the city of New York has to go out and find him. What for? It's insane. You're still here, you stupid gangster. That's right, my friend, and aren't you glad? Not exactly, no. You know where this is? That's a 35 cent ballpoint pen. Right, and also wrong. The outside, yes, the inside, no. Oh, Dr. Fleiss, what have you got inside it, Dr. Fleiss? A neutron bomb. Oh, oh, don't wave it around like that, man. Yes! Oh, don't wave it! Oh, yes! A neutron bomb! Recently developed by me, which I carry with me at all times. You understand, you stupid gangster? Because as the president said to me yesterday on the phone, Flies, I trust nobody, I trust you. Keep it in your pocket at all times, he said. That was a presidential request. You believe in democracy, don't you? For me, yes. I'm not so sure about you. A neutron bomb. Which if I press this little catch, not only you and me will disappear, which is of little importance, but this entire ferry boat also disappears. And also the entire five boroughs of New York City, which includes the, the, the world of Astoria. And in case I was a waiter there, my job would also disappear. And this would be the worst calamity of all. Let me assure you of that. Oh, oh that's awful. Isn't it, eh? And all I need to do is press this little catch. And the entire Western Hemisphere disappears. Oh, don't do it, Dr. Fleiss. Why not? I, 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 it's not for myself, but, but I has two boys at home. Actually, they're my grandsons, and I firmly believe that they is the hope of the future. Not interest. Oh, what do you want, sir? What do you want? I'm at your mercy. <laughs> Give me a little drink. Where? 
When we get to the dock in Staten Island for the fourth time, you are going to go with me to the nearest phone booth. You insert a thin dime and call the Russian consulate. Yes! Tell them Dr. Flies is willing to sell out for 500 million gold francs to be deposited in a bank in Lucerne, Switzerland. At the present moment, the delegate from the USSR is delivering a savage attack on the morality of the United States. <laughs> The United States of America is a gangster nation. An offer has been made to sell to us several items for which we have no use whatsoever. We have been asked to take over a United States vessel by the name of the SS Clementine. This offer was made to us by an American gangster by the name of George Lanyard McGroff. you stupid gangster. No more neutron bomb. All finished. Neutron bomb. <laughs> you stupid gangster. <laughs> I got bad news for you. You're not a gangster and you owe me 35 cents for the ballpoint pen. Also, I'm not Dr. Flies. And furthermore, Dr. Flies is no doubt in Washington. And further than that, I'm a waiter at the world of Astoria. <laughs> and you, you are as big a fake as I am. Admit it, admit it. <laughs> How did you know it was not a bomb? <laughs> because, you stupid gangster. <laughs> This is a modern age. Bombs don't go tick a tack tick a tack tick a tack tick a tack <laughs> But you went along with it for the game. Is that what it was? Yes, that's what it was. As, as one man to another, may I ask you a question? Anything the government don't forbid to say, I'll be glad to enlighten you, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you do it? Why did you go along with me? Why did you let me deceive you and, and vice versa? To break up the monotony, I suppose. My monotony or your monotony? There is not much difference, is there? You know something? No, what? Look over there. No, come on, smile. smile. You're on TV. <laughs> no kidding. No kidding, eh? <laughs> Hello. How are you, Mama? <laughs> What do you suppose is going to happen? Arrested by the Russian police. What else? <laughs> my God. We lead an interesting life. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got for breakfast? Apricot cordial. I don't like it. Neither me. Guess what we got it left. <laughs> you're a clever man, sir. I know you're not Dr. Fleiss, but you should have been. You got ethics. I know, I know. And this is something I don't need. Hello, detective. In trouble again?
Well, go on up, McGrath. They're waiting for you. Who? Who? Leona and the boys. Oh, for them. I called them, told them you were coming. Uh, look, uh, why don't you come up and have a bit of breakfast with us? Oh, no, thank you. You go up and face the music alone. It's funny. I thought at least there'd be crowds, photographers, neighbors, TV lenses moving in on me. No, McGrath. Your crimes have gone unnoticed. Couldn't you charge me with something or other? Public nuisance? No, that would never stand up. Not with the record of your having been hit in the head by a female bandit with blonde hair and a fuzzy sweater. Detective, sir, I'm fond of you. I don't know why. Thank you. You can quit looking for that female that conked me on the button. That's so? Why? Because I forgive her. In fact, I forgive everybody. Even me. You're nice fellas, but why do you have to be cops? Couldn't you be something useful, like, like sanitation department? We are. <gasps> Papa McGrath! <laughs> Where have you been? Now, how do you feel? Tell me the truth. Wonderful. Hey, where's the boys? They're in the kitchen waiting for you. Hot, hot. Is that all you've got to say is hi? Where you been, Papa McGrath? Oh, I've been out with a homemade bomb, kidnapped a waiter from the Waldorf Astoria. That's about all. Also, I have tasted the wild grape of liberty. And it was good. Sour, but good. Well, what's new around here? Nothing. Oh, there must be something. Don't tell me nothing. I've been away for 36 hours. Oh, he got elected vice president of his social science class. Yeah, and all I ever hoped for was Blackboard Monitor. There are eight million stories in the naked city. This has been one of them. Screen Gems film presentation, Herbert B. Leonard, executive producer.